This week, I prepared myself to speak to a man who isn't divided at all. Atheist and Darwinian biologist Richard Hello. Dawkins is touring Australia this month with Thinking. Richard Dawkins, welcome to The Weekly. Thank you. First question, it's a, it's a big one. If there is no God, what do you call out during really good sex? Oh, come on. Oh, that's Actually, a good one. Oh, yes. come on. <laughs> that's good. Um, oh, my God will do fine. It doesn't matter if there is no God. You can still use the same expletive. You, I'm a cultural Christian, after all. You were, though, a very religious teenager. How much well, of that was to do with... Are. Most people are. Yeah. How was Elvis your gateway to God? Ah, oh, you read the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was a fan of Elvis, as most people of my generation were. And it came as a great surprise to me to notice that he actually was religious. I saw in a shop window a, a record of him singing gospel songs, and I was, I was entranced. I mean, I, I thought this was, you know, this was... So that, that lasted for a couple of months, and then... And then... <laughs> if only it was just Elvis, you might have stuck with it for... Like, do you still believe in Elvis? I like Elvis. I mean, I, I even sometimes listen to his records, yes. And so what was it that, that made you pivot away? Uh, I became educated. In science. And it was as simple as that? I wouldn't call it simple. I mean, it's, 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 it's quite complex, but, but it's beautiful and elegant. And once you understand that it's possible to explain the complexity and the beauty and the elegance of the universe in terms of simple explanations, that has a beauty all of its own. And that struck me, I suppose, at the age of about 16. Now, you had to cancel your last trip to Australia uh, because you had a stroke. Yes. I, I can't imagine you would go through that without at least contemplating mortality. Well, yes, I mean, I contemplate mortality anyway. The, the stroke didn't make that much difference in that regard. I was very sorry to cancel my trip to Australia. Um, I think I made a pretty full recovery. I, my voice occasionally croaks. You may even hear it now. It's not too bad now, but some, some days it is. Apart from that, I'm pretty much recovered, I think. You weren't at least in some part curious? Like you might be vindicated or you might even meet God? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's not the slightest chance of that, no. You've declared Islam to be the most evil religion in the world. Who's the second most evil? Well, I should think Roman Catholicism, probably. Well, no, I mean, so there are some crazy cults as well, but if you're talking about the most influential ones, the ones that have a huge influence on humanity. Roman Catholicism. So do you have a favourite? Like Amish or snake charmers? Or... Um, Quakers, maybe. Quakers? They're peaceful, they're gentle, they're thoughtful. Um, they have meetings to discuss questions. They're not dogmatic. One of the most evil things about religion is this, is this threat uh, of eternal damnation after you're dead. And there are people who live their entire lives terrified of what's going to happen to them after they, they're dead. Now, that is a deeply, deeply evil thing to do to people, especially to children, but even to adults as well. You said that Islam is, should be feared. The fearing it is, is reasonable. Well, well, I mean, obviously, most, most Muslims are nice, peaceable people. But the fact is that at present in the world today, the most, the most danger from any religion comes from Islam. But that, an Islamophobic reaction, an irrational fear of Islam or uh, a dogmatic ostracism of, of Islam, isn't that in its, in its own way just a form of fundamentalism? A dogmatic ostracism of Muslims is a terrible thing, mainly because Muslims are the people who suffer most from Islam. So far be it from me, as far as possible be it from me, to be bigoted towards Muslims, absolutely not. But Islam itself, the, the preaching of, of Islam, um, contains the seeds of uh, evil. Is one of the risks of railing against Islam that you, you will recruit a number of Islamophobes to your cause? Yeah, that is a risk and, and um, I don't like the phrase, Isla I don't like the word Islamophobia because it's actually rather a good reason to be afraid of Islam, so one doesn't want to use the word, the word phobia. I'm actually just reading at the moment a book showing that, that the early Christians were every bit as bad, uh, if not worse than ISIS today, exactly the same way. It's uncanny how similar they were in the way they policed the entire Roman Empire and any slight deviation from Orthodox Christianity was punished by torture and death, burning of books, burning of libraries, all sorts of things. So it's not a new story. You do receive a, a fair share of criticism. I've seen you, in fact, reading out 
some of the criticism and abuse that you that you cop online. Our God is a loving God. But if you keep peddling this kind of filth, then I pity you when Jesus returns. <laughs> ha ha, you f***ing dumbass. <laughs> I hope you get hit by a church van tonight and you die slowly. Both in reading that and watching it back, you seem to actually enjoy that quite a lot. Oh, yes, I had great fun doing that. I had an even better one recently, by the way, which I haven't yet read out. It was... After all that, I hope you get hit by a church van and I hope you die a horrible, painful death. This one was, um, I hope you lose your watch and are late for an important appointment. <laughs> <laughs> you... I've heard that there may be a version of the God delusion for children yes. in the works. Who told you that? That's interesting. That, well, that's I do a... my research. Okay, Actually, no, my team does their research. Okay. <laughs> I, I feed off there. Yes, well, <laughs> um, working on that at the moment. And have you settled on a name for that yet? How about OMG, I think I'm an atheist? Wow, that's pretty good. You think? Yeah. But I did bring a few suggestions. Oh, please. If you're curious. Yeah, Take please. these on board. Yeah. Um, first off, there's the BFG, the big fake god. <laughs> yes, OK, yes. Uh, then we have Charlotte's Web of Lies. Yes, yeah. Uh, and my personal favourite, oh, the places you'll go, except heaven, it's not real. Yes, any of those would do. We've actually had a lot of suggestions. Oh, uh, really? But I think OMG, I think I'm an atheist, um, might be fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're, you're also an expert on, on evolution. I was hoping you'd get around to that at yes. some point. Um, are we humans capable of evolving in time to survive the planet we're making? Well, the changes we're wreaking are on a historical time scale, and evolution works on a much slower time scale than that. So I don't think we can rely on evolution to save us from what we're doing to the planet. We have to solve those problems on the same time scale, namely the historical time scale, um, using culture, using using politics. Um, we're not we're not going to evolve to to, um, to to escape that. So humans aside, which creature do you think is best evolved? Do you have a soft spot for one, like a favourite animal? Or... Oh. Um... I love the um, dancing shifaka of Madagascar that dances on its hind legs between forest clearings. I love, I love koalas, I love wallabies, I love flying phalangers among Australian marsupials. Um, I mourn the loss of the thylacine, the Tasmanian wolf. Um, I'd love to see that brought back. Do you think that should be a pursuit of science? There's also moves to bring back... Woolly mammoths. And, yep, I, I, I'm, I'm in favour of that, yes. I like the idea of trying to bring back these creatures, yes. Could an argument not be made that that is contrary to evolution? <laughs> well, not really. I mean, it, animals go extinct for non-evolutionary reasons. They go extinct for all sorts of diff different reasons. In any case, it doesn't matter if it is. I mean, it's a, it, they're beautiful creatures. They once roamed the Earth. I'd like to see them roam the Earth again. Richard Dawkins, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.